Letitia Stouch was the resentful Colorado stepmom who has been on trial for the murder of her 11-year-old stepson, Gannon, has been convicted and sentenced. Let's talk about it. Testimony continued today in the most notorious criminal trial in Richland County history. Dr. John Boyle is accused of killing his wife, Noreen, and burying her body in the basement of his new home in Erie, Pennsylvania. The 12-year-old son finally took the stand. As I heard a scream, I heard a thud. It was about this loud. We, the jury, find the defendant guilty. When I was 12 years old, my testimony sent my father to prison for murdering my mother. This podcast serves as a type of therapy and reconciliation for myself, and it is my hope that it helps anyone who has experienced deception, betrayal, and dark trauma. I'm Collier Landry, and this is Moving Past Trauma. Hey, movers, welcome back to another special episode of Moving Past Trauma. I'm your host, Collier Landry, and what's going on? For those of you who don't know me, I am the kid who put his father in prison for murdering his mother. I have a very unique perspective on true crime, and I want to welcome you guys all to the program. Many of you have reached out to me asking my opinion on this case, so I wanted to sort of weigh in now that she has officially been convicted and sentenced today. I'm going to play a little bit from the trial, from the sentencing portion with Judge Gregory Werner when he's talking to her and talking about her claim, because for those of you that don't know, she tried to claim insanity and uh, it just didn't work. Nobody really bought it. The The crime was so cruel and horrific in its nature that I don't think anyone bought her mental health excuse, let alone the judge. And we're going to get into portions of this sentencing in a second. But I want to give you all some background on the case. So here goes. Letitia Stouch was found guilty on Monday of murder of a child under 12, guilty of tampering with a deceased human body, and guilty of tampering with physical evidence in the death of her 11-year-old stepson, Gannon. Stouch, who had worked as an elementary school teacher for children with special needs, prosecutors had alleged that she killed Gannon because she was resentful about being used as a glorified babysitter. She even Googled the phrase, I hate my stepson. Now, Stouch was accused of stabbing Gannon 18 times before beating him across the head four times and then shooting him in the jaw in January of 2020. Stouch then hid his remains in a remote area nearby and later rented a van to drive the little boy's body to Florida, where she dumped him under a bridge in Pensacola. Now, ironically, I spent the first year of my life in Pensacola, but that's neither here nor there. Stauk is said to have wanted to end her marriage to Gannon's father, Al. Prosecutors say that a photo that she snapped of Gannon laying in his bed in the morning of his murder, she had texted it to Al, who was away serving in the National Guard at the time. They say that she used it to try and cover her tracks by claiming she left Gannon in bed to go for a hike, only to come home to find he'd vanished. Prosecutors said this was further evidence that the crimes were premeditated. She carried out actions to kill Gannon, put his body in a suitcase and hide it, to hide evidence of what she did to Gannon. Told numerous stories to investigators to manipulate the course of the investigation. And finally, to discard Gannon inside that suitcase off of a Florida bridge. Now, here is my takeaway of this whole just debacle. Now, as someone whose father is a psychopath who also murdered his mother and disposed of her body in an equally horrific and disgusting way, I can tell you with 100% certainty that she is a psychopath. So here's the interesting thing in the mental health aspect of all of this. At the beginning of the trial, Stalk's attorneys had argued in opening arguments that she was in fact guilty of attacking Gannon, but she wasn't really attacking Gannon in her mind. She was instead attacking demons from her childhood past. And that was from the abuse that she had suffered at the, at the hands of her mother's many boyfriends growing up. And that trauma had therefore caused her to have a quote, psychotic break and attack Gannon as if he was one of those demons instead of actually attacking Gannon. Now on the flip side, there was other evidence of Letitia telling her husband, Al, when he testified later on, that she said that Gannon had it out for her. So 
a lot of this appears that she really was resentful towards the child. And look, her mental health argument didn't hold up in court. She wasn't <laughs> she wasn't found guilty by reason of insanity today in court. However, she tried. And the fact is, is that they were claiming that she had what is called dissociative identity disorder. And I am not a mental health professional at all. But from what I understand, that is similar to what we used to call multiple personality disorder. And it, it's very unfortunate, but there are many people that suffer from this. But in my opinion, and I'm not a professional, but also as the judge said, and we'll listen to that in a second, he didn't buy that either because many people do suffer with from mental disorders and do not commit murder, let alone murder a child. Your attempt to raise the claim that you did this because of your adverse childhood is also a betrayal of people that have mental health issues. It is no secret that there is a large part of our population that has mental health issues. It's also no secret that our country and our health system could do a much better job addressing mental health issues than it does. However, the number of people with mental health issues who become violent is small, and the number who become murderers is smaller still. Your claim that a mental health issue caused the murder in this case is a disservice to all those who struggle with mental health issues every day. Obviously, no one bought this excuse, and it it showed because not only she tried to escape from jail, she had premeditated this, she had been giving statements. I mean, hell, they did a YouTube video, she's giving interviews, she's claiming different stories. These are all the same sort of things that my father did. No, I did not. I did not kill Noreen. I never harmed her at all. That somebody else, like who also is from Colorado, Chris Watts did in the disappearance of his wife, Janan, and then the two children. This is all part of how psychopaths behave. Everything is always calculated. Again, you can really find no motive in these. I can never find the motive of why my father murdered my mother. They were saying that she was trying to get out of a bad marriage. And that's why she murdered a kid. There are many ways to get out of a bad marriage or a marriage that you don't like. You don't have to murder your husband's child. But again, this just speaks to the psychopathy and the heinous nature of a crime like this. Everything is calculated. Everything is intentional. These people don't miss a beat. I mean, they, they do miss a beat, which is why they get caught. But everything is so cold, calculated, and, and callous. And I know it's really hard for us to wrap our minds around, but people like this deserve to be incarcerated. They, they can't rejoin society. They're, they're be, in my opinion, this is my opinion. And my father is a psychopath. Okay. My father premeditated the murder of my mother. Everything is calculated. There's no reason to do this. It's all about them and the ego the wrongs that they've, just the fact that she scapegoats her abuse as a child and her mental health issues. There are plenty of people with mental health issues that don't murder people, that don't take a life, that don't use that as an excuse to commit murder. I have had a number of cases which have demonstrated one person's capacity for cruelty toward another human being. I can, however, say without hesitation that the facts in this case are the most horrific I have ever seen. Your conduct in this case deserves the maximum punishment that I can impose under Colorado law. As such, with respect to the charge of first-degree murder after deliberation, I remand you to the custody of the Colorado Department of Corrections for the remainder of your life with no possibility of parole. I'm so glad that it ended in this guilty verdict that she's going to go away for the rest of her life. She needs to be incarcerated. My heart breaks hearing Al Stock's victim impact statement. It, it, it broke me today listening to it. It's so, it's so heart wrenching to hear this father is going through and the family and the, and the, all the ancillary victims that have been a part of all of this because of Latesha's complete selfish and solipsistic behavior. There's no reason for this. There's absolutely no reason for any of this, but she didn't care. And it has destroyed so many lives. And this poor child that is going to grow up wondering if they could have prevented anything. Lena, I just, no, you can't. 
these people are determined to do absolute evil. But that's just my two cents on the whole subject. I come from the experience, so you guys don't have to. Anyways, drop a comment below and let me know what you guys think about the verdict. Let me know what you think about the family and your support for them. Uh, please, if you would, like and subscribe to the channel. I really appreciate it. All my channel members, thank you so much. All my Patreon members, thank you so much. And I want to say thank you to all the men and women that have served this case in the prosecutor's office, the police departments, the multi-state cooperation to bring justice for the Stalk family. Thank you to everyone. You know, there's a lot of questions that revolve around law enforcement and the justice system, but today I really feel like justice prevailed. I'm Collier Landry, and this is Moving Past Trauma. Thanks, y'all. This podcast is made possible by support from listeners just like you. For exclusive content around this podcast, please consider supporting me via Patreon by going to collierlandry.com forward slash support. Please subscribe via Apple Podcasts or wherever you get your podcasts from, and please leave us a five-star review. If you want to see video episodes of this podcast, please check out my YouTube channel at youtube.com forward slash collierlandry. You can find links to additional resources in the show notes of today's episode. This podcast is a production of Don't Touch My Radio, copyright Collier Landry.